you're listening to Tori Writer's She Said What podcast. I'm Tori, along with Marcy Persky. In this installment, the latest home remodeling project pales in comparison to the mistakes some parents make. Like yours? Like us? The second that I started recording, the neighbor across the street fired up a lawnmower. So, just a second. Okay. I could close one more window, but that would involve taking the air conditioner out of it. Yeah, no, don't do that. (laughs) Our lawnmowers out here are called goats. Yes, they come with their own set of challenges, the goats. Yes, they do. (laughs) But I love them. I know you do. Yes. I hate technology part, um, however long we've been doing this podcast. Yes, yes. Part 367.89. So I turned on my computer. To have this little chat with you. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, all these numbers and words came up. And not my usual picture of Frankie and I with the wrestler guy. I didn't know what to do. And it said, press enter. And I couldn't find enter on my computer. Oh, dear. I'm sitting here reading every little button. I had to call the child to come over and press enter. That, that's not a technology problem. That's a failing eyesight old age problem. That's what that is. It's, well, it, it's also like it's really dark in here and maybe I need a lit up keyboard. Or or, or you, one with giant letters. Like those Zoom. phones we used to buy for grandma with the big giant buttons. I am grandma now. So yeah. We got to get you a, a landline phone with big giant buttons. <laughs> jitterbug. Have you ever seen the commercials for the jitterbug phone? No. It's for old people. Has big numbers. So I guess the phone for our generation as we age into these things will be like the mosh pit phone. Exactly. And I would get one of those, actually. <laughs> What's up with you? Well, I, I've taken it into my head to make some home improvements, smaller ones than yours. And, okay. And so, of course, this means that the minute I decide that I have the discretionary money to spend on something for the house, some other thing that is a must be done explodes. Oh, yeah. That always happens. Yeah. You can count on it. When this house was built, this was a stately, lovely neighborhood. And then you may remember that uptown where I live for a long time became a seething cauldron of human depravity. You and I would do it through it at three in the morning. Oh, my God. It was so awful. I was just reading an article from like 20 years ago about the legendary Green Mill pub. And yep. when, when the new owner took over to uh, to clean it up and make it a jazz venue, they, they cleaned the artwork and the frames around the artwork. They found all these syringes. People would just take their used syringe and just tuck it into the artwork. I'm shocked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was surprised they even bothered to try and dispose of them because the neighborhood, as it used to be, just ran like hell to get to the various music venues that were operating here at the time. Yes. So this house, around that time, by whoever I think made it into a rooming house, people barricaded themselves. Hold on a second. The foster dog needs to go out. I need to race him to the door. I saw him watching. Yeah, He's standing right there on the stairwell. He's really cute, but now that he knows that he he's allowed to pee and he's not in a cage and he won't be peeing all over himself, you have to catch it quick when he says he needs to go out. You have to race oh, him out there. Yeah. Race him outside like a little kid that tells you they need to go potty. You have to, like, whisk them right to the bathroom. You yeah, know. usually the, you, I find out after. but Right. The minute that they think of it, it's already too late. You, so with yep. a kid, your toilet training, you have to say all the time, do you have to go, let's just put you on the potty. The big cutie. Yeah. We set him on the toilet to poop. And we yeah. had read all the books about how you're supposed to praise them. We praised him so much for pooping in the toilet. We scared the living crap out of him. He wouldn't use. He was afraid of the toilet. It made his parents act like insane people. He wouldn't go near it for like another six months. There you go. Yeah. Now that I've relived my early childhood toilet training experience, somehow my home repair remodeling project just doesn't hold my attention anymore. How's your project going? Yeah, I'm getting a haircut. 
That's a remodeling project, a new haircut. Well, we've been in the 90s up here, and we're not used to it. And my hair looks like Sideshow Bob from The Simpsons. You could just tuck it up in a scrunchie till things cool off. <laughs> They'd fall out, and then all of a sudden my hair's... A, I think my hair, like, pops out of them. Well, there are certain items that you don't ever really own. You just borrow them for a while, and then the scrunchies universe... Scrunchies are one. <laughs> scrunchies are one. Pens are another. I'm always amazed by people who have really expensive pens, because I think to myself... Either you just lock this up in your desk all the time, or if you use it, you have to be prepared for it to just walk away. Yeah, I would never want an expense. All my pens say something on them, which means I stole them. They're either from the bank or the vet or, uh, let's see, when I was visiting you, yeah, I got one from the Grateful Dead store for free. Oh, there you go. That's... They gave it to me to sign something, and I said, oh, thanks for the pen, and just dropped it in my purse. That's what people do. That's I have yep. I have a couple of pens that are are not insanely expensive but not disposable. And the thing about having a pen that is actually replaceable for a sum of money as opposed to you buy it in a box at Staples and you get 100 of them for whatever is that you turn into an orifice. People see that you're what using orifice? the back one. People see that you're using the pen and they ask if they can borrow it and you find yourself barking at them. No, not that one. <laughs> Wait, I'll get you one from the purse. And it's the inferior grade of pen that they get to borrow because I know, I know the minute they experience my special pen that they will, <laughs> they will come back in the middle of the night and break into my house and take it if they don't just walk away with it right then and there. So, yeah. Put pens. one of those air things on it that will track your pen everywhere. Those great big <laughs> giant circles. I love those. The idea of them. I don't have any on anything. And I tried to put one on a cat. <laughs> <laughs> it left the house and never came back. Uh, yeah. The cat but, came back, but. But not the air yeah. tag. No, did, the did, tracer. No. They've caught a lot of thieves with those things, which is kind of reassuring. There was some guy at some airport stealing luggage. The air tag led the police right to his house. It They never catch you the first time. Have you noticed that? Anybody who gets arrested for something, it's never the first time. They'll always say it's the first really? time, but it's never the first time. So, of course, his house looked like one of those lost and found airport bargain stores. So that was a good thing the air tag did. But I, I don't. I have enough trouble trying to figure out where I am. I don't need somebody else knowing where I am while I'm trying to figure it out. Well, you know how paranoid I am about that. Yeah. Like, the only thing I would ever put it on was that damn cat that kept disappearing. <laughs> and I wanted to know where he was going. And now his hoodlum cat friends somewhere are bouncing this air tank all over the place. Yeah. Because I'm sure the battery is dead. Or the goats and ate it. could trace it. Goats ate it. Every, that's my excuse for anything that disappears. That could be house. too. Goats ate it. Let in me... one of the goats' gut. Forever. But, um, Forever yeah. and ever. I would, I'll stay I, in I your gut. Never, <laughs> <laughs> I would never put it on a suitcase. Some government agent could find it and track me. Oh, there's a thought. Speaking of air tags, I was going to tell you about my girlfriend's air tag experience. She usually flies business class and often first because she flies all the time. This is where she spends her money. And some fancy flight to some fancy country where she was working didn't give her whatever amenity they had promised. So they gave her a $300 credit to the in-flight magazine. It's kind of the airline version of Sharper Image where you can just buy yes. anything you want. Yeah. I, that, I always spend my whole flight looking at those. It is kind of amazing. And they had, well, we'll get to that in a second. And, and she tells me that uh, she's got this $300 credit, and what she's going to do with it is buy fish oil pills. What? Yeah, that's what I said. What? What? <laughs> you're going to do what? Someone's giving you $300 of free money, and you're going to spend it on fish oil pills? And then I berated her and told her I couldn't even be her friend if she was the kind of person who took $300 and found money. And spent it on fish oil pills. Yeah, I mean, they have all kinds of cool stuff in those catalogs. That's right. Like compasses that you can stuff up your nose or whatever. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Stuff you never thought you needed until you saw it on that page. That's right. 
And I looked, I was excited to go shopping in the catalog with found money. And I found air tags, a set of four. But air tags only work if you have like an iPhone. Right. She does have an iPad. I asked if she travels with that. She could use it. But it was interesting, the idea that somebody I know and love would, would even consider for a moment taking $300 worth of found money and spending it on fish oil pills. I finally think I talked her into like some cookies and some kind of exotic tea, which at least you enjoy. Fish oil pills are probably the least <laughs> enjoyable thing you could possibly spend your money on. You don't taste them. You, they're like medicine. It's like, I, I've got $300 huge, too. found money. I think I'll buy some a lifetime supply of Pepto-Bismol. <laughs> I mean, why would you? I don't know. It's yeah, like you go to the right. circus and you get excited looking at the elephant poop. I, I just don't. Yeah, no, I would buy. I'm lost all the time. So I think one of those little nose compasses might be like. What is a me. nose? Are you serious? There's a nose no, compass? I just made it up. Oh, okay. Cause, you know, but I might invent it and go on Shark Tank. It's a good idea. Your daughter has every part of her body pierced. She could probably accommodate a miniature compass. <laughs> I'm sure she she could put compasses all over her. She's got those giant earlobe things that are just bizarro. Oh, she could put, she could put a those. compass in each earlobe. Yeah, and she was proud of herself. I mean, I love your daughter, but of all the things to be proud of, how how mangled you've made your earlobes is not on the list of things I'd be bragging about. It's like you've accomplished generation. something. Sorry? It's a different generation. Yeah, I know. But if my kids come home and, and it's one thing you want to do it, fine. It's another thing if you consider it some kind of personal accomplishment. Well, you know, when I went, when I was in college and 20 years old and I went with my friend, we both had pierced ears. We decided we wanted double piercings. Okay. So we went to the piercing place, and my piercings were done when I was 17 by my pediatrician. Well, we went um, to, like, a beauty salon. Okay. Like an old school, like where my mom would go to get her hair pumped up. Kind of <laughs> you know? I know those so, places. Yes, I do. I had one, and it hurt like H E double toothpicks. So I said, okay, I'm and I'm not doing the other one. I'm just gonna have th two piercings on one and one piercing in the other. Well, that's fine. this was this was the seventies. Yeah. Uh, my friend said, okay, I'll do that too. And so we each had three holes in our ears. And I go home for some break. I don't know. My dad immediately noticed. And his head blew off, and he told me I looked like a French whore. Uh, he said that a lot. And Anytime you didn't like anything you were wearing or doing, he said you looked like a French whore. I know. And and this is the one time that I finally asked him, how do you know what a French whore looks Ooh, like? Oh, that can't have gone well. No, it didn't go well. But I, I still have three holes in my ears, and I wear three earrings, and so does my husband, it, coincidentally. He has three holes also? Yep, he wears two earrings in one and one earring in the other. So this is nice. This is like a children's primary school math book situation. If Marcy yes. buys a pair of earrings <laughs> and Frankie buys a pair of earrings and each of them has three holes, how many pairs of earrings must they buy in order to fill all the holes in all their ears? <laughs> My father's but, um, thing, instead of calling me a French whore, when you would modify your body in any way, I guess there was a tribe of indigenous people called the Ubangis that used yeah, to my dad would call stretch that. out their lips. You know, that was their... Like, yeah, the, they were in National Geographic all, all the, the time. time. Yeah, and my father used to say, well, you know, you could be a Ubangi. Just put a plate in your lip. That was his big thing. You'll, you'll end up... If Tasmanian you're... devil was another one that he would call me. My father would not have called me a Tas... I don't think he knew what that was. But yeah, it's my interesting. Dad knew it. if, As if... my dad got older, though... He got a lot better. He didn't pierce his ears, but I did take him to the South Park movie, and he laughed all the way through it. So Because he didn't have to keep a straight face for you anymore. He could relax and be himself. <laughs> I was growing up. That's right. Yeah. How much more damage could it do? Your parents have like a regular list of things they threaten you with, uh, things they compare <laughs> you to, uh, things they scare you with, and that's in regular rotation. Like when I worked in Top 40 Radio, the A list got played every 20 minutes and the B list got yeah. played every, yeah. My parents had a series of threats that they would work their way through just like Top 40 Radio. That's how they functioned. Well, I 
I told you I'm one of those parents that like, I've dumped my kids out of my car. I will tell them once, and then I will go maybe three blocks and if they haven't done whatever I told them to stop doing, poking, screaming, whatever, touching and, each other. Yeah. I pull over and say, okay, walk home. And that Five applies even later. now, even now that they're like 30 years old, I've, you know, you'll do the same thing. I know you will. Yep. Yep. They know I will. Thanks for listening to the Tory Writers She Said What podcast. Since you've made it to the end, you might want to know that my book, She Said What? A Life on the Air, is not only available in print, but now also in complete audiobook form, narrated by me and available on Audible. 